Broadcasting from the deserts of sunny Arizona, you're listening to I've Got a Plan, hosted by Tim Fiskus, a podcast focusing on the two-player experience of Arkham Horror the card game. Join me as I take two investigators through a campaign, stopping along the way to talk tactics, strategy, and whine about the whims of the chaos bag. Let's have fun. got a plan. We are going to be taking Skids and Daisy as they continue their return to the Dunwich legacy and the return to undimensioned and unseen. Now this scenario is has always been a bit of a hit or miss for me. I sometimes really enjoy it and I sometimes really just kind of wish it wasn't part of the campaign. Uh, I I get what they were trying to do with this scenario, and I think it's pretty cool that they were really trying to shake up the formula of how things were working. Uh, but this scenario is so, so, de um, what's the word I'm looking for? So dependent on willpower that it almost makes it sort of a speed bump for teams that aren't willpower focused. Uh, and you have to sort of cut bait and go uh, with some teams. but. The challenge is interesting, and they certainly up the challenge in return to the undimensioned and unseen. So we're going to give it a go here with Skids and Daisy. Skids, of course, is not known for his high willpower, but I think with his decent evade stat, he might be able to run interference for Daisy and let her take out some of the broods using her willpower stat, uh, although she only has three willpower herself. So. To that end, I, let's talk a little bit about the changes that I made to the decks heading into this scenario. Uh, we had a total of four XP to spend. Skids, I believe, only had two to spend because of the hospital debts being in play at the end of the last scenario. So for Skids two XP, I have purchased a copy of Physical Training and that replaced a guard dog. So I went with the upgraded physical training, that is the 2XP version, pictured here. Uh, it's just uh, free to put into play, uh, and it has the same effects as the other uh, level zero physical training, but it also has a couple extra icons when you're committing it. I don't think I'll be committing that in this scenario. The goal here is to be able to build up some cash and then pump my willpower up for specific attacks against the broods of Yog sothoth I have also used Adaptable to trade out two Vicious Blows for two Say Your Prayers. The Say Your Prayers, I think, are going to be very handy towards the end of the scenario, maybe at landing a blow on one of the broods. Honestly, if I can get out of this and resign having killed two of the broods, I'm going to be pretty happy with that with this team. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll surprise myself or maybe we'll get destroyed. But either way, uh, I'm going to give it a go and make it interesting as much as I possibly can. Daisy's upgrades uh, were uh, 4 XP and she has purchased... Uh, actually, Daisy had 6 XP because she saved two back from the prior scenario. So she has spent her 6 XP to purchase another upgraded Archaic Glyphs, this time the Guiding Stones version. Uh, I opted for a, a different set of Archaic Glyphs, mostly because I haven't played with them very often, and I wanted to try out both, uh, both sets and see which one I liked better. Both of them have abilities that are quite good for Daisy, so I didn't have any problem with either one of them. I also have upgraded, a, uh, or upgraded into a level two shortcut, which is just a terrific card in this scenario. I like to try to get that into the 10 acre meadow if I can, uh, and use that to slide around a little faster to chase down these broods that move around randomly. And then I also purchased for that one remaining experience a Forewarned. Uh, Forewarned is uh, a fast insight event that allows you to cancel the card's revelation effect from the encounter deck at the cost of placing a clue onto your location, which for Daisy is really no big deal. She can usually just pick it right back up. Uh, that uh, that card, uh, Forewarned, went in in place of a Moonlight Ritual, and the other two were upgrades. So that was an easy uh, swap out. And that's what we're looking at going into the next, uh, into this scenario. Now, 
Because Matt Newman has decided that this was not hard enough as it is, we also have to search our deck for a weakness and add another weakness to our deck at the beginning of this scenario. Uh, specifically, according to the uh, rule book here, we are going to be looking for a madness, injury, or pact weakness and adding it to our deck. So I have the deck of basic weaknesses ready to go here. We're looking for a madness, an injury, or a pact. All right, that sounds terrible, quite frankly. So let's see what we get here. Uh, for skids, we have, we have uh, okay, an internal injury for skids. So this is actually not bad for him at all. Uh, might have to take some direct damage until he can get rid of it. But honestly, I take that over many of the other options available. Let me sleeve that up, get that into his deck, along with the new cards in his deck. And then let's go ahead and get Daisy's uh, new weakness. And Daisy has, uh, that is a curse. Uh, here's a madness. All right, so Daisy is adding a hypochondria to her deck. And this uh, this also isn't too terrible. Honestly, um, both of them got the one that they would like to get as far as damage and horror. If Skids had gotten hypochondria or Daisy had gotten internal injury, that would have been a little bit worse. And then we're going to go ahead and put Daisy's new cards in as well and shuffle all that up. All right. Okay, and through the magic of video editing, we're back with shuffled decks, and we're going to be ready to get going with the scenario. Skids has taken the Powder of Ibn Ghazi, which has three clues on it, as we have uh, three characters who survived the Dunwich Legacy. Uh, those three clues are going to be um, nice to get those plopped out. I don't tend to hold on to the Powder of Ibn Ghazi's clues per very long, uh, at the beginning, if we don't have any monsters right away, I might just go ahead and get Skids to pop those onto the first brood we find. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a long, drawn-out scenario where we are trying to epically fight all four broods. Uh, there are four broods in this scenario because of the fact that we had two characters uh, sacrificed to um, Yog sothoth And we are going to begin the scenario at the Dunwich Village. Now this version of, version of Dunwich Village is a three shroud location with one clue, and it reads, action resign, you hide from the creatures. And as a fast action, you borrow some hounds to track the creatures by scent. Any investigator in Dunwich Village may place one of his or her clues on any abomination enemy in play. Group limit once per game. So placing the clues on the abominations allows you to use the esoteric formula, which we don't actually have yet, uh, to be able to damage the broods. It can also help you be able to take out some of the other thralls and things, but typically that's used for broods. And we also have a brood of Yog sothoth which is going to start the game at Cold Spring Glen, which is down here in the southern part of the map. I have not actually seen this. I have dealt this one out randomly from the return to... Uh, Undimensioned and Unseen set, and our brood is Brood of Yog sothoth Charging Beast. All right, this guy is massive. He is a five fight, four evade, and one health. He gets a plus two health for the um, number of investigators, uh, so a total of three health. He cannot be damaged or attacked except by the ability on Esoteric Formula. Nothing strange there. Forced. After Brood of Yog sothoth moves for the first time each round, if it is unengaged, it immediately moves again toward another random location. All right, so this guy's going to pop around twice until we can deal with him, and he's fairly tough to evade at four, uh, four evasion. So that's not, that's not great for a first guy, but he does only have the three health. So if I can quickly get over and deal with the esoteric formula or deal with the Waitley Ruins and get the esoteric formula, he's not, not terrible. He dishes out two damage and one horror, so you can't mess with him for too long. I will potentially go deal with him with skids here pretty quickly. Okay, so the... 
Agenda at the beginning of this scenario, Agenda 1A, Rampaging Creatures. Reports of terrifying entities wreaking havoc across the countryside have caused the citizens of Dunwich to panic. Worse, the creatures seem to be invisible to the naked eye. Forced at the end of the enemy phase, move each brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemy once toward a random location. All right, so they're going to be this. This brood is going to move once toward a random location, which will either be uh, up to the Waitley Ruins, up the ten acre ten acre meadow, or over here to Dunwich Village. So if we stay put, we've got a one in three chance of him coming after us. But then, because this guy moves twice, we have a slightly worse than one in three chance. So that's uh, that's that. And then Act One A says Saracenic script. The monsters tearing through Dunwich County are immune to traditional, except traditional weapons. Only by reciting a particular incantation can the creatures be defeated. First, you must search the ruins of Wilbur Waitley's home in order to find the final sections of the otherworldly script. Objective, only investigators at Waitley Ruins may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance, which is four clues. I start with zero clues. There is one on the location here at Dunwich Village. And who knows where the rest are? I do know that there are a good many at Whitley Ruins, so I might be sending Daisy straight over there. Of course, having to be careful about where that brood is going to end up. I don't want Daisy and Skids to get too far away from each other. But let's see what our starting hands uh, dish up. Skids, starting five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. We are looking at a beak cup, an enchanted blade, an elder sign amulet, which does have two willpower icons, a 45 automatic, and an intel report. Hmm. Okay, well, the intel report is certainly tempting because I could use that to quickly grab some clues to let us get started here. Hmm. I definitely would like to keep one of the weapons because of the ability to take out some of the other uh, non-brood monsters that are around, but I also would like to be able to get a little more ability to pump up my evasion based on this, this guy that's starting here is tough to evade. So cash-wise, I'm not sure what the best way to start with this is. I'm gonna keep the Elder Sign Amulet. I'm going to keep the 45 automatic. And I'm going to toss everything else back. I'm not going to keep the Intel report. I'm going to go for three different cards. So replacing these three, two, three. And I've got a scene of the crime. That can be very useful uh, in this situation with the broods around. A Dr. Francis Morgan. Okay, well, that's... Okay, not bad. And a hospital debts, which will get returned back to the deck. <clears throat> Dropped a card. And replaced by a lock picks. Ah, very nice. Okay, glad to see the lock picks. So that's Skid's opening hand, which is a hand which costs 14 bucks to put into play if you want to get everything in there. So that might take a little bit, but we'll see what happens. And Daisy's opening hand. One, two, three, four, five. We've got Daisy's tote bag, a premonition, a logical reasoning, a banish. Uh, interestingly, the brood of Yog Sothoth is non elite as of right now, so he could be banished uh, to allow me to get him out of town. I'll keep the I'll keep the banish for sure because that can help me help Daisy get out of a bad accidental um, smack from the brood. But everything else is going back. I don't need the logical reasonings right now. Those are great for committing to the attacks, by the way. But I think right now I'm gonna go ahead and I'll keep one logical reasoning and I'll take three other cards. I'd like to get Daisy one of her tomes to get started or one of her other specials. In fact, I'm gonna to toss the other logical reasoning back as well. I'm gonna draw four cards. All right, my four new cards are Mr. Rook, Dr. Henry Armitage, that's very nice. 
a storm of spirits and an I've got a plan. Okay. Well, the I've got a plan, I think, could be help, could be handy sometime mid-scenario against one of the uh, thralls. The storm of spirits will be committable, but I'll probably just, yeah, I, I, I definitely won't play that. Uh, Dr. Henry Armitage, however, is a really nice starting ally in this scenario to get me some cash. So I will take him. No tomes, unfortunately. And then I will replace it with Do replace Mr. Rook with Dr. Henry Armitage. I can see that being a good series of activities at the beginning. Okay, but uh, as we are right now, we've got to go ahead and get the business of getting some clues going. I will start with Daisy because I want to see what happens with Mr. Rook. I have a new weakness in my deck, so this is going to make Mr. Rook a little bit more uh, of a dangerous proposition. But let's go ahead and play him anyway. I'll spend my first action to play Mr. Rook, get him into play with three secrets. Move my special tome action out of the way here. That'll cost me three of my five resources. And I will exhaust Mr. Rook and spend a secret to look at the top nine. I'm going nine from this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I get my ne Necronomicon, that would kind of be ideal, so I can go ahead and just get my tome actions out of the way and get that out of the way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looking for a crack the case if I can get one. Word of Protection, that's good, Forewarned. St. Hubert's Key, there's my Necronomicon. Okay, well, I'll put that into play for sure. Archaic Glyphs Guiding Stones could let me grab some clues a little more easily. Another Mr. Rook, a Divermis, a little early for that. Mind Over Matter, and Crack the Case. All right, I'm going to take the Crack the Case right now, because that's what I came here for. I would have taken an old book of lore if I found it, but I didn't. So I'll go ahead and shuffle that back in. I'll take a Crack the Case and a Necronomicon. That Necronomicon, by the way, is the bad one. Uh, the good one is still hiding in the deck somewhere. The John D. translation. So that's going to come into play with three horror on it. And I will have to just transfer some of that horror out to myself in order to clear that thing. But I'm not going to be taking a ton of tests right off the bat here. I will stick around with skids, though, so I can crack the case for him. Well, I, maybe I'll try to do it. All right, that's action number one. I've only got two bucks. I want to save some money for that evade. Okay, so Daisy will investigate for the second action. She's investigating at a five to three. I won't commit anything to this. And out of the bag comes a minus one. Oh, this is a good time to talk about what this scenario has in the bag. So, Undimension and Unseen. Skulls are minus one for each brood of Yog sothoth in play, so right now that's minus one. The cultists are just to reveal the token and take a horror if you fail. And the elder things, I have no tablets in the bag, the elder things are minus three, which are pretty bad. If they're revealed in an evasion attempt against brood, they attack us. So that's really the bad one, uh, the minus three. But I didn't get it on that test, so I grabbed this clue. So since that was the last clue on this location, Daisy is going to go ahead and play Crack the Case and grab three resources, all of which are going to go to Skids. And then for her third action, I'm going to move up to the Blasted Heath, try to just get away from the Broods a little bit. Maybe grab, make a little loop around here and grab some clues on the way. So Daisy will move to the Blasted Heath. Now, I am aware that the Blasted Heath has an end of the turn penalty uh, that you have to take, uh, but only one of the two versions does, so I'm gonna see which one I got. Blasted Heath reads, the summits are too rounded and symmetrical to give a sense of comfort and naturalness, and sometimes the sky silhouettes with especial clearness the queer circles of tall stone pillars with which most of them are crowned. 
All right, Blasted Heath. At the end of your turn, if you are in Blasted Heath, take a damage. All right, well, I will suffer that damage this round, but that will allow me to potentially grab a couple clues next round and get moving. So this is a three shroud location with two clues. Daisy will go ahead and use her free tome action on the Necronomicon, taking a horror on herself and leaving the Necronomicon with two horror left to go. That's it for Daisy. Over to Skids. Okay, Skids, I think, will probably run up there, grab one of those clues as well. I don't really have the good... Um... Hmm. Interestingly, I could save up for a scene of the crime in case we get chased down. I kind of like that plan. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play a lock picks, though. So the lock picks cost three. And they uh, get three supplies. And allow him to investigate much easier, much more easily. And I will spend an action to move up into the Blasted Heath. And then I will use the lock picks at the Blasted Heath. I ain't afraid of no damage. And, oh, speaking, speaking of which, I never took the damage with Daisy. I'll put that on Mr. Rook. And then I will lock picks. This allows me to add my, uh, add my agility to my investigation. So I'm investigating this at seven to three. And I get a minus one, so that is a six to three, which allows me to not have to, I succeeded by at least two, so I keep my lock picks intact and grab a clue. All right, and that is the end of our turn. Skids takes a damage for ending at the Blasted Heath. Which is fine, he's got eight health, and I've got some, I've got Dr. Francis Morgan in hand to soak up some damage, so no, no big deal. All right, enemy phase. Uh, nothing happens right now. At the end of the enemy phase, we're going to go ahead and move the brood of Yog sothoth So he's going to move once toward a random location. I'm going to shuffle these up, and I'm going to pick a random location. So the way that I'll do this is I will shuffle them into a stack, and I'm going to roll a six-sided die and just take the one that's in that position. All right, number six. One, two, three, four, five. Moves towards the Devil's Hop Yard. All right, so that brood is going to move over here to the Waitley Ruins. And then the brood is going to be... Because this is the Charging Beast, he's going to move again. I'm going to shuffle these up one more time. <clears throat> Roll the die. Number two, that is the Waitley Ruins. Okay, so he's going to stay right where he is <clears throat> at the Waitley Ruins. Okay, well, we managed to stay away from him for a round. Well away from him for a round. So that's good. And then we go to the upkeep. So skids will reset. We will draw a card. Uh, an enchanted blade. So another weapon option if needed. And take a resource. And Daisy will reset Mr. Rook. Draw a card. Ah, an old book of lore. Not too shabby. And I will take my third resource, which is exactly what you need for old book of lore. So given the number of cards I have in my hand that cost three right now, I think we are going to try to get Dr. Henry Armitage into play ASAP. So we'll see if we can't go for some, uh, get, get some uh, money built up while we're setting up for fights against the broods. I'm definitely going to want to try to get a um, St. Hubert's key into play, but I'll search that out in just a little bit. And we are on to the first Mythos phase, Doom 1 of 5. And our encounter cards are, for Skids, Need for Knowledge. All right, if you have no clues, Need for Knowledge gains Surge. All right, I do have a clue. Otherwise, test Intellect X, where X is the number of clues you have. Okay, so I need to test Intellect 1. All right, so that's uh, 3 to 1 on that Intellect check. I won't spend anything on that. The bag is fairly friendly at plus two right now. And I get a minus two. 
So that is a successful uh, check on need for knowledge. No penalty there. All right. And then Daisy will draw. Eager for death. All right. This is a uh, willpower. And everybody loves the art on this card. I've got it on my little mat right over here. Test willpower to increase this skill's difficulty for each damage on you. So I don't I don't have any right now. So testing willpower two. Uh, this is a three to two check. If I fail, I take two horror. Um, I'll commit the storm of spirits. I don't think I'm going to need that. So I'll take that to four to two. And we pull a minus one. Okay. Well, I didn't have to ditch the storm of spirits but that's all right gotta be careful and that's the mythos phase okay well that was pretty harmless honestly uh so you don't get this scenario you don't get too many harmless mythos phases so let's go ahead and get moving here uh the Yo brood of yog sothos has still has three directions that he might travel at the end of this round and we're not quite well, we aren't ready to fight him at all but he is sitting in the waitley ruins which is where we need to go to be able to turn in our clues once we collect them all. So let's go ahead with skids first. I will, or will I? Maybe I wanna get set up with Daisy a little bit. I'll get set up with Daisy a little bit. Daisy will go first. She will take her first action to, uh, let's, hmm, do I wanna do the old book of lore? No. Before my first action, let's do Mr. Rook again. And because I'm not digging for anything specific, I'm going to go six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Almost always team nine, but in this scenario, i got to be a little more careful. All right, Mr. Rook, the good Necronomicon, Old Book of Lore, Ward of Protection, Logical Reasoning, and Premonition. Okay, good. No weaknesses. Boy, tough calls on this one for sure. Uh, the good Necronomicon is going to be huge for me, I think. I do have a hand slot still. But that Ward of Protection is awfully tempting because of the stuff that can boost the broods. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep the Ward of Protection. Uh, the first time I see one of those altered beasts or one of those ones that makes the broods get more health, I'm going to play it. So taking the Ward of Protection and shuffling the rest back in. Okay, and that informs the rest of my turn. I will take my Tome action to try to clear the Necronomicon one more. And then I've got three actions remaining and I've got three resources. All right, let's go ahead and Go ahead and grab a clue, or try. Five to three on the investigate. Uh, that's a cultist, which is reveal another token. All right, five to three on the investigate. And I pull a minus two. Okay, so that's successful and the cultist is a whiff. And I grab this clue. All right, that's two out of the uh, three total out of the four clues necessary to advance the act. Let's go ahead and get out, out of the Devil's Hop Yard, or de out of the uh, Blasted Heath, because I've got that cleared. And let's move back to Dunwich Village. Try to swing away from the broods for just one more turn here. Um, for my third action, I'm going to... I could take a risk and move to Cold Spring Glen. I'm just going to draw a card. I'm just going to draw a card for my third action. Oh, a St. Hubert's Key. Okay, well, that tells me what I'm going to do next turn. So I will keep that in hand. And that's it for Daisy. Okay, Skids. I think I'm going to pop into the Devil's Hop Yard. Try to grab a clue there. So far, the uh, so the Blasted Heath does not provide me any sort of way to deal with the broods. 
So let's go ahead and move into the Devil's Hop Yard. <clears throat> the Devil's Hop Yard reads, Still others try to explain the Devil's Hop Yard, a bleak, blasted hillside where no tree, shrub, or grass blade will grow. And this is a one shroud location with two clues. So easy, easy grab here. Free action. You lure the creature into the thick fog. An investigator at Devil's Hop Yard may place up to two of his or her clues on an abomination enemy in the Devil Ho Devil's Hop Yard. So you can just place the clues there as a free action. You don't even need to ex uh, exhaust them to do that. So that's pretty cool. So I'll move into there <coughs> with skids. And let's go ahead and try to grab those clues. Um, if the brood comes at me, it comes at me. I'll just try to we weasel my way out of it. So skids will lock picks this first one. So I'm going to be seven to one. And I get a cultist. And the next token is minus three. Okay, so that is enough to not lose a charge off the lock picks. So that's that. And that is four clues, by the way. And then, hmm, for my third action, do I want to get back out of here and make the brood get lucky? Because if he moves toward... Hmm... Yeah, because if he moves anywhere but the uh, Blasted Heath or the Devil's Hop Yard, then I'll get away from him for this turn. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to go ahead and... Hmm. Maybe I'll set something up here. Yeah, let's go ahead and get a weapon into play. For now, since I don't have any ammo support, I'll just go ahead and play the Enchanted Blade for three, just to save a little cash. This comes into play with three charges, and I can use some charges to, to hack and slash at some stuff. So that's my third action. And that's the end of the investigation phase. Enemy phase, nothing happens. And then at the end of the enemy phase, the broods are after us. So let's go ahead and shuffle this up. Okay, here's our randomized locations. Rolling a die. Oops. Roll that where y'all can see it. Except I hit my location connectors. Gracious mercy. All right, two, number two. That is Dunwich Village. All right, he's gonna move towards Dunwich Village. So I can move him either to Cold Spring Glen or to Ten Acre Meadow. Let's move him towards Cold Spring Glen. Yeah, okay. And then for his second movement, as he is still unengaged, he's going to move toward Number two, which is Dunwich Village again. Okay, so he's going to move towards Daisy. So he moves to and engages. Oh, he's massive, so he does not engage Daisy. He's considered engaged with her, but he is not in her threat area. Okay. So, unfortunately, Skids and Daisy are split on the number of clues that they have. Hmm, hmm, a little bit tricky here. We'll see what happens. Daisy does not have any sort of, uh, any sort of trick to get away from that brood other than the banish, which might be happening. Uh, not like her willpower is super powerful to get away from this guy anyway. Hmm, okay, well it is what it is. So let's go ahead and move on to the uh, reset. So skids will reset and draw a scene of the crime. Okay, another one of those might be used to commit for some stuff. And I will take a resource. And then Daisy will reset. Because this guy's massive, I can always just walk away from him and just take the hit. Quite possible. And then Daisy will draw uh, an Archaic Glyph's Prophecy Foretold. Aha, uh -huh. yes, okay. So this is the one, I'm gonna read this. Um, 
spend one charge, investigate. If you succeed, you automatically invade an engaged enemy. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Okay, well, it would provoke an attack of opportunity to get it into play, but afterwards I can use the charges to automatically evade. That is not, uh, that does not mean evade an, an elite enemy or anything, just any engaged enemy. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so that is a way out. Takes an attack of opportunity, but that's kind of okay. So Daisy will stay, save that archaic glyph spell into her hands and take a resource, putting her at four. Resetting the tome action, and we're on to the next mythos phase. All right, doom number two of five on the agenda. And Skid's card is uh, 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 Towering Beasts. So this is the one I wanted to cancel with Daisy, but unfortunately Daisy's uh, Word of Protection is only level one, so I can't. It's a peril anyway, so. Attached to a brood of Yogg Sothoth enemy in play. If that enemy is at your location, take a damage. It gets plus one fight and plus one health. All right. That is unfortunate because I can't do anything about it. So that brood becomes a towering beast. I, I don't take any damage. And neither does Daisy. And then Daisy will draw. Okay, Idle Hands. All right, this is a new one from the uh, Return to. Uh, Revelation, put it into your threat area. As a free action, if Idle Hands is in your threat area during your turn, take two damage and discard it. You may take an additional action this turn. At the end of your turn, take a horror until you get rid of it. Okay, so that is, hmm, that is interesting. Uh, Daisy has some will wiggle room with taking horror, particularly because the, uh, I've got still some soak with Mr. Rook, though I was probably going to go ahead and have him take the damage for me. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little tricky right now because Daisy does really just does not want to take two damage if she can at all avoid it with her only five health. Skids has not seen the uh, healing mirror yet, so that would actually, in fact, he hasn't seen that yet since he added it to his deck. But it is what it is. We need to get these we need to get the esoteric formulas discovered and we need to do it really fast. So that's gonna be our priority this round. I think what I might do here is just, let's go first with skids and see if I can't get that esoteric formula discovered and distributed before the end of the round. Yeah, okay. So skids is gonna go first and I will spend my first action to grab a clue or try to grab a clue. I will commit a scene of the crime to this to go four to one. I'm gonna save my lock picks for the Waitley Ruins. So four to one. Get a minus three, okay, good. Good job committing that scene of the crime. And that will um, get me the clue that's sitting there. I need one more clue in order to be able to advance the act. So let's send Skids down for his second action to the Whiteley Ruins. This Whiteley Ruin says, It was as though a house launched by an avalanche had slid down through the tangled growths of the almost vertical slope. Each investigator in the Waitley Ruins gets minus one willpower. Just what Skids needed. As a uh, free action, you hurl a nearby canister of paint at the monster. Any investigator at the Waitley, Waitley Ruins may place up to three of his or her clues on an abomination enemy in the Waitley Ruins. All right. So it's a nice little place to set a trap. It is a three shroud location with four clues. <coughs> and Skids is going to try to get one of them. So right now, using my lock picks to put me at seven to three. And 
and the chaos bag says minus one. Okay, so that's successful. I still don't use a charge on the lock picks, and I grab a fourth clue. All right, I will right now immediately spend four clues as a group, although it's just me, skids at the uh, Whitley Ruins to advance the act. Act 1B. Check the campaign log if Dr. Armitage survived the Dunwich legacy. He did. There, Armitage sighs a breath of relief, jotting down the last phrases of the formula. I have translated the last of it. He shudders as he hands you the script, the words conjuring forth memories of his battle with the creature. I hope this is the last time I'll have to read it, he admits. But if we do nothing, the end result will be much, much worse. Each investigator puts into play one set-aside esoteric formula. Perfect. And that's all that happens. So we grab an esoteric formula for each of us. Uh, the esoteric formula reads, Action Fight. This attack uses willpower instead of uh, fight. You get plus two willpower for this attack for each clue on the attacked enemy. Use this ability only on an abomination enemy. All right. So Daisy gets one of those and Skids get one, gets one of those. Daisy's version is much more important than Skids' version. At least for now. And that is the end of Skids' turn, although I could pay for an extra action. How much does that... How important is that to me right now? Tricky, tricky, tricky. No doubt about it. Yeah, I'm not going to spend the resources. I'm going to just let Daisy deal with this guy. We need to get some more clues on him for sure, though. <coughs> All right, Daisy's first action. As fancy as it would be to be able to get the archaic glyphs down and use them uh, to just get out of there uh, and evade the brood, I want to do that closer to skids. So I'm just going to step out of the location. So first action for the turn, I'm going to go ahead and ditch the Necronomicon. So I will spend that tome action to put my third horror on Daisy. That satisfies the Necronomicon and it is gone to the discard pile. All right. Um, I'm not going to use Mr. Rook or am I? I sort of have a good hand right now. Um, I'm not in any kind of a position to quite fight this guy yet. I'm going to just take one on the nose with Mr. Rook and get out of here. So I'm going to move out of the location and take the attack of opportunity from the uh, Brood of yog -Sotha. So Daisy's going to move down to Cold Spring Glen. The reason I'm moving down there is because I know that that has some special evade potential down there. So I'm gonna move down to the Cold Spring Glen. God, he gasped. I told him not to go down to the Glen and I never thought nobody would do it with them tracks and that smell and the whippoorwills are screeching down in the dark at noonday. Cold Spring Glen is a three shroud location with two clues. Each enemy in Cold Spring Glen gets minus one evade. Also, you lure the creature into the dense tree cover and it becomes tangled. Investigators in Cold Spring Glen may, as a group, place up to two of their clues on any on an abomination enemy in Cold Spring Glen, which is not an, not an engaged abomination enemy, just an abomination enemy, or not a, a not an exhausted one. So that's great. I'm gonna go move down there. I take an attack of opportunity from the brood. So that is two damage and a horror. And I will take the damage and the horror on Mr. Rook and the second damage will go on Daisy. So that brood did a dollop of Daisy. And thank you, Mr. Rook for your time and energy. All right, so that got Daisy out of there. He's massive, so you can get away with that. He's still not elite, not that that matters right now. We have two clues on Cold Spring Glen. Oh, uh, there was one more thing I wanted to do. Before Daisy leaves that location, she's gonna go ahead and take the, uh, take the free action there to place a, one of her clues 
on that brood. So let me mark that that free action has been taken at the Dunwich Village. That's group, group limit once per game, as all of these are. And that puts a clue onto the brood, which will help me be able to defeat him. All right, Daisy's second action will be to play the Archaic Glyphs to help her be able to get out of trouble there. And that will cost two resources. Comes into play with three charges. And for her third action, I will investigate at five to three. I will not commit anything to this. Let's go five to three. And we pull a minus one. Okay, good, great, grab a clue. Daisy's got two clues. Uh, Skids right now has zero because he just spent them all to advance the act. Oh, I never read Act 2A. Let's do that. Act 2A. They must be destroyed. With the formula in hand, you finally have the means to destroy the creatures wreaking havoc in Dunwich, but only if you can survive long enough. Objective. Defeat as many brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemies as you can. If, you've done, if, you've, if there are no copies of them, meaning you've beaten all four, then you advance. <laughs> I don't see that happening, but we'll give it a go. And that is the end of the investigation phase. Enemy phase, we don't have any other enemies engaged with us, so we just deal with the broods lumbering along. So end of the enemy phase, the broods are going the brood is going to move. Its first move is going to be toward one, two, three, four, five. Toward the Whiteley Ruins. Okay. So I could take it into the Blasted Heath, or into the Cold Spring Glen, or into the Ten Acre Meadow. Uh, nope, I'll take it into Cold Spring Glen. That's perfect. I have a little trap set up there. So it will move into Cold Spring Glen, which will engage with Daisy. And because it is now engaged, it no longer does its second move. It's perfectly happy hanging out there and causing trouble for Daisy. All right. Let's reset. Skids draws. Another enchanted blade. Won't need that for a little while. Can I take a resource? Really like to see that physical training. And then Daisy will draw. Another St. Hubert's key. Okay, well that second one is committable for sure. Oh, at the end of my turn I took a horror. So I'll need to do that. Puts me at four horror till I ditch that idle hands. I've got those horror healings in my deck. I'm I'm not too terribly worried about that right now. Um, I've got a couple. I've got the Saint Hubert's key, which can save me a couple horror. Uh, I do. I, I will need to deal with that at some point, but not right now. All right, and then I take a resource putting me at three. Okay, so here goes. Mythos phase. One doom on the agenda. My encounter card with, day, with skids is Sorted and Silent. Attach Sorted and Silent to your location, which is the uh, Waitley Ruins. Forced at the end of the round, each investigator takes a horror that's there. Okay, well, it's fine. When the agenda advances, it goes away. So because I will forget that, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bead marker on the agenda to show that I have an effect to deal with. Okay, and then Daisy's card is Ruin and Destruction. Revelation, if there are no investigators at the same location as a brood of Yogg-Sothoth, Ruin and Destruction gains Surge. Well, I am at the one. Otherwise, each investigator at the same location as a brood tests Agility 3. For each point you fail by, you take a damage. I will pass on that one. Thanks very much. Um, well, let's see. Agility 3 is a just a terrible t thing for Daisy to check. She has two Agility. No, I'll go ahead and 
cancel that with the Ward of Protection. So one resource in, another horror on Daisy. This is starting to be a bit of an issue. I've got five out of nine. But like I said, I'm not gonna be hanging around here very long. And I'll just cancel that. Flat out cancel it. Okay. Now, investigation phase. I do have what it takes to be able to beat this brood this round. I really feel like I do. Uh, I'm going to need to hit it four times. But I can get some more clues on it pretty easily. So the first thing I'm going to do for sure is we're going to take the free action there and... We're gonna drop two daisies, two clues on the brood. So that's now it's got three clues there and that takes care of the special action of the Cold Spring Glen. Now with three clues, that gives us a plus six to attack the brood. And it has six fight. So that gives us pretty good odds uh, of being able to uh, being able to, to deal it a damage. Yeah, really good odds, actually. Using the esoteric formula. In fact, that actually gives even gives kids pretty good odds. Let's start with Daisy and see if she can just nail this thing to the ground a little bit. So, Daisy's first action is going to be to... Attack with the Esoteric form. I think all three of her actions will be to do that. So action number one is to attack. Uh, and this is, let's see, he is at six fight. I am at nine fight. Nine to six is really good. The bag is very friendly at nine to six. So I'll just take that chance. Nine to six and my token is a zero. Okay, that's one damage onto the brood. I'll do it again. Nine to six. That's another damage on the brood. I'll do it again. Nine to six. A cultist. I gotta draw another one. Another token, and I draw an uh, an elder thing that says, "If this token is revealed during an attack or an evasion attempt against a brood, it immediately attacks you." Ugh, yuckers! Uh, it's still successful, but it attacks me back. Okay, and uh, that means the I did not fail the test, so the the cultist doesn't kick in. But Daisy gets attacked back for two damage and a horror. Yikes. Okay, I, I don't have any soak or blocking. So Daisy will take two damage, putting her at three of five, and a horror, putting her at six of nine. And that stops any thoughts I might have of using the idle hands. So uh, that idle hands is a big problem right now because of the fact that I can't take the damage. I'm going to probably have to play Henry Armitage and just soak him, soak that. Yeah, for sure. But I did get another damage on the brood, so that is now a total of three out of the four damage needed to kill it. That was Daisy's three actions. I do not have a tome uh, in play, so I don't have anything to do with that. So Skids can come in and finish this guy off. Skids has a an attack of eight to six on this guy, which is not as good, but it ain't bad. And Daisy can help him out with a commit. Yeah. Let's do that first, and then I can maybe go scouting for some healing with Skids. So Skids will move into Cold Spring Glen for his first action. He will attack the brood for a total of, let's see, my willpower is two plus six is eight to six. Daisy will commit a St. Hubert's key to make that nine to six, and Skids will hit him at nine to six. I got a minus three. 
How about that? Nice. All right, and that is enough uh, to kill him. So the brood has been defeated. So the clues go away. The brood goes away. That was a towering brood, by the way. I should get extra credit for that. But that is one brood defeated at great cost. But we still have our full uh, uh, powder of Ibn Ghazi available. I just need to take a little bit of time and, and heal here. All right, and then Skids has one more action remaining. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to see if I can't find some way to help Daisy out a little bit. I will draw a card. I got an emergency cash. That's fine. Doesn't help Daisy out very much. <clears throat> and do we want to take an extra act, extra turn, extra action this turn? I don't believe I do. No, I think I'm good. We have dealt with the brood, so that's really great. Uh, and right now there are no more broods in play. We, when the agenda advances, we'll get another one, but we don't have one right now. So that's the end of the investigation phase. There is no enemy phase right now, or there's an enemy phase, but no enemies. And so we reset. Skids will draw another emergency cash. Okay, well, he's got a lot of, ca a lot of emergency cash ready to go. That's seven cards in hand, and I'll take a resource. Yeah, Skids will need to start taking some double actions here. And then Daisy will draw. I can also hoard resources for when I can get that physical training. That's not a bad idea either. And Daisy draws a, another Mr. Rook. Okay, the soak is very, very, very nice. She'll take a resource. Okay. I know what I want to do this turn if I can uh, get my find myself some free time. Mythos phase. Doom four out of five. Uh, the encounter card for skids is violent commands. Oh boy. Put violent commands into play in your threat area. Uh, as an action, deal two damage to an investigator at your location and discard it. At the end of your turn, test willpower three. If you fail, take a horror. Okay, well, Skids will almost certainly just use that violent commands to become a little bit of a self-cutter. That's not, not very pleasant at all, but that appears to be the uh, theme of this particular set. A bunch of people grabbing themselves and smacking themselves in the head. And then Daisy's card is, oh boy, an avian thrall. Okay, this is uh, going to spawn engaged with Daisy. And uh, when it is being attacked with a ranged firearm or spell asset, it gets minus three fight. Hmm, well, uh, it can be attacked with a spell asset uh, using the esoteric formula, because it is an abomination. Or I could get uh, just get a gun in play and just start popping it. That seems the right thing to do. So it's engaged with Daisy, so that's no good. We need to be able to get out of that situation. But it is also a hunter. Okay, so this is the opportunity. This is the time for Daisy to use her uh, archaic glyphs. So we'll go ahead and spend a charge off the archaic glyphs for my first action. And we will investigate the location. If we succeed, we'll be able to automatically inv evade him. So I'm uh, investigating at five to three. And I will commit, I will commit the, I've got a plan to go six to three. Yeah, that's fine. I was thinking about maybe using the banish also, but right now I don't have the willpower. So six to three. Ooh, pulls me an elder sign. Okay, so I've gotten rid of the Necronomicon, so that truly is an elder sign. So for Daisy, I draw a card for each tome I control, which right now, womp womp, I get no, no tomes. Uh, but I do succeed at that, so I grab the clue, and I evade the avian thrall. So that's a nice twofer, and lets me get the heck out of dodge. Well, so my second action is going to be to, uh, that was my first action. 
Second action is going to be to play the good Necronomicon. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't take the good Necronomicon. I took the uh, um, Word of Protection. That's okay. That seems fair. Uh, so let me get those two resources back. So then for my second action, I will play Dr. Henry Armitage. He seems reasonable because he's hanging around in this scenario. That cost me two resources. And then for my third action, I will move up into the 10 acre meadow. Dr. Henry Armitage isn't gonna be around for long, but this will at least hopefully be allow me to grab some more clues and maybe uh, set up another trap, something like that. So 10 acre meadow. This is the last of the locations I haven't uh, seen yet. The trees of frequent forest belts seem too large and the wild weeds, brambles, and grasses attain a luxuriance not often found in settled regions. At the same time, the planted fields appear singularly few and barren. All right, this is a two shroud location with three clues on it. As a free action, you set a bait using a live animal. Each investigator at 10 Acre Meadow may place one of their clues on the abomination enemy there. All right, so sort of a teamwork kind of a deal. It's got three clues on it though. hopefully get set up for another dude here. All right, the end of Daisy's turn. Uh, she uh, does not have any tomes to do, and she has to take a horror from the idle hands. I will put that on Dr. Henry Armitage, who I think is going to die to idle hands next round. But that will be a decision for another round. Okay, skids. I think I need to just go ahead and deal with this avian thrall. Hmm. Well, ranged firearm or spell assets. I've, I've got the gun. I've got a, a 45 automatic, but I also have two hands that are full of stuff right now. Um, for now, I think we can avoid the thrall. I hate to just completely overwrite my enchanted blade. My chances of hitting the thrall with the enchanted blade are pretty slim. I might also be able to use the might not be able to use the um, avian thrall to help me get some clues using uh, sin the crime. Might be a little pie in the sky, honestly. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and just uh, skedaddle up to 10 acre meadow for an action. I'm going to play, uh, use, uh, I'll use three resources and play Dr. Francis Morgan. I don't have an ally in play yet. So three resources get me a Dr. Francis Morgan. Dr. Francis Morgan reads, you get plus one fight. So that's gonna put skids at four fight. And after you defeat an enemy, Def exhaust him to draw a card. So, exhaust her to draw a card. But she has four health and one uh, sanity, and I'll go ahead and use that four health right now. So second action was to play Dr. Morgan, and third action I will do violent commands. Get rid of that and deal two damage to Dr. Morgan. Sorry about that. Hey buddy, stab. And then I've got two, re two resources left. I could take an extra action, but I think I'm good right now. Yeah, I'm good right now. So I'm gonna let that go. We're gonna be hitting the agenda flip here, which means a new enemy in play. So enemy phase, nothing happens. The uh, ready, Avian Thrall readies. And I'm going to go ahead and reset. So Skids will draw a narrow escape. Okay, this is really good uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, it's got the two agility icons to help me evade the next of the, the next of the beasts that comes out to use up my Powder of Ibn Ghazi. So I think that's probably what I'll do. It also would let me land a little bit better hit uh, after I evade it. So that looks 
pretty decent and I'll take a resource. And then Daisy will draw a card. Divermus Mysterious, all right, that is interesting. Um, Speller Insight for my discard pile. Uh, nothing really right now that grabs me, but that could be good if I can get a, a knowledge's power going. And I'll take a resource, putting me at two. Oh, you know what? I will not take a resource. I'm gonna ditch that Divermus Mysterious because I don't have a use for it right now, and I will uh, uh, tap San Henry Armitage to get exhaust him to get three resources, and then I'll take my resource. So it puts me at five. Far better use of Divermus Mysterious. We'll kind of treat it like it was a uh, little emergency cash. And that is the end of the round, heading into the next Mythos phase. All right, Mythos phase. We're going to go ahead and advance the agenda. <coughs> five Doom. Out of five. The um, marker I have here reminds me to remove Sorted and Silent, which goes to the discard pile. And we have Agenda 1B. Calamity Strikes. An old pickup truck rolls to a stop along the weathered trails of Dunwich. The driver, Joe Osborne, calls out to you through a shattered driver's side window, the truck's engine still running. It's over at Eric's farm! he shouts. Done blasted their place apart. Oh, poor Henry and Martha. You ask Osborne for the location of the Eric's homestead, and it confirms your worst fear. For that attack to have occurred recently, there must be more of the monsters on the loose. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Spawn one of the set-aside brood of Yog sothoth enemies at a random location, if able. Oh, we are able. We still got three left to go. So, Let's go ahead and shuffle the discard pile into the deck. And then we will spawn a random brood. All right, so we do have an avian thrall who is gonna be coming after us as well. Skids might need to be starting to get ready to take care of that to let Daisy cover the brood wherever that shows up. <clears throat> Let's see. We still have the ability to put a trap down at the 10 acre meadow. We also have a Waitley Ruins trap available and a Devil's Hop Yard trap available. So that's pretty good. I have all of my Powder of Ibn Ghazi uh, charges left. I've got three of those on there. So yeah, we have the capability to kill another brood for sure. Uh, who knows, maybe we'll be able to kill two broods. We'll see. I'm not going to push it, though. I don't want any trauma. We need all the health and sanity we can get heading into the final two scenarios. All right. The Mythos deck has been shuffled. Encounter deck shuffled, and our brood is... Brood of Yog sothoth Amorphous Terror. Monster Abomination, six fight, three evade, one health. It gains two extra health and cannot be damaged except by the ability on Esoteric Formula. Okay, nothing new there. Forced, after it enters your location or vice versa, test willpower three. If you fail, take a horror. Yuck. All right. Not what we needed, uh, which means we want to get in there and get this thing dead. ASAP. Let's see where it spawns. All right. We got six locations here. Let's pick a random one. The Die of Destiny says number six. One, two, three, four, five. Spawns at Dunwich Village. All right, right there. Okay, now this one's not fast like the other one, so it's only gonna move once. And we have a one in three chance of it moving to where we are, which of course would not be ideal. Um, because of its very significant attack. Although actually that move happens at the end of the enemy phase. So that would actually be okay. Let's see, if it had to go to the Devil's Hop Yard, it would not move to us. If it had to go to the Waitley Ruins, it would move to us. If it had to go to the Ten Acre Meadow, it would move to us. 
in Cold Spring Glen, obviously it would not. So yeah, we've got a one in three chance of it moving where we want it to move. So this might be a good round to go ahead and try to deal with the avian thrall, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and take the rest of the mythos phase. Skid's encounter card is need for knowledge. If you have no clues, it gains surge. I have no clues, so it gains surge. All right, surge is into ruin and destruction. If there are no investigators at the same location as a brood, it gains surge. That is the case. So another surge. Surge is into, oh boy, another avian thrall. Okay, well this, this is getting... This is getting nasty for sure. We're gonna have to deal with that, no doubt about it. So that avian thrall is engaged with skids, which is as good a place as any for it. And then Daisy's encounter card is a shiza, a towering beasts. All right, so that is going to go on to this brood of Yog sothoth and that's going to make him tougher. Thought I'd be able to avoid that for a round or two, but no such luck. Too much surging. Okay, so that thing has seven fight and four health. Woof. Okay, well, we can still set a trap for it, but right now we need to deal with these avian thralls for sure. Um, I would guess that, hmm, that extra plus two might be handy because then I could attack it at, so what I'm considering doing here is I'm considering laying the trap in 10 acre meadow on the avian thrall. Um, let me kill him pretty easily. No, uh, I think I have a better plan here. Um, I'm going to start with Daisy, and I am going to pull him with Daisy. So uh, at Daisy's action number one will be to pull the avian thrall uh, and engage him. Action number two will be to uh, use my Archaic Glyphs, use a charge of the Archaic Glyphs to uh, investigate and then hopefully evade this guy. So I will investigate this location at five to two. I will not add anything to this test. And we pull a minus one. All right, so that is a successful investigate. So Daisy will grab a clue off of there. That gives her two clues and it evades the avian thrall. All right. Now, there is nowhere I can go. Well, it's a tough, kind of a tough one to place here. I'll just set that there. There's nowhere I can go right now that gets me away from the broods and the avian thralls, at least not with one action. But fortunately, Daisy actually has two actions available to her. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of idle hands right now. So uh, I will take two damage and discard idle hands and take an additional action. So idle hands goes away. I take two damage and I'll take that on Dr. Henry Armitage. Thank you, sir. Sorry for punching you in the face, but I need, I cannot take any more horror. And then Daisy will have two more actions available to her and I will use those to try to escape up to the Devil's Hop Yard. So I will spend one action to move to the Waitley Ruins and another action to move to the Devil's Hop Yard. And that is it for Daisy. Okay, Skids, who also might be taking four actions this round. I'm going to spend my first action to play the <laughs> Do I overwrite the blade or not, is the question. All right, let's look at this. The blade is going to let me attack for six to five. 
I am sitting on a scene of the crime. Let's do that. Action number one, I will play scene of the crime. Discover two clues at my location. Boop, boop. Because there is an enemy at the location. Thank you, scene of the crime. That cost me two resources, leaving me with two. I do also have two emergency caches in hand. So my fight against this guy is six to five. There's only one brood in play. So actually the skulls are at minus one. So six to five is not terrible. Um, I could commit another enchanted blade to go seven to five. All right, let's try it. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna fight this guy straight up. I have the wrong kind of weapon, but I don't wanna pay and overwrite a completely full um, weapon. So enchanted blade, six to five. Let's hope for a good pull on the first one here. And we pull a zero, all right, very good. So that deals two damage to the brood, or to the avian thrall. And then for Skid's third action, I will do the same thing. I'll take another enchanted blade charge, except this time I'm going to commit the other enchanted blade in my hand so that I'm at seven to five. All right, third action, seven to five. Plus one, all right, good, very nice. All right, so that takes care of that avian thrall. He is dead. Uh, that is uh, enough to trigger Dr. Francis Morgan. Uh, exhaust Dr. Francis Morgan and draw a card after killing an enemy. Okay, I drew an intel report. All right, well, I don't have very much cash right now, but I do have two emergency caches in hand. So that could be potentially good. Um, let's see. I have one more action if I want to pay for it. And I could scoot out of here. I'm not going to be able to evade the avian thrall. He's going to come and get me no matter what. But I'm, I'm healthy, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, I'm going to, what do I want to do? My chances of being able to take out a second avian thrall is uh, a lot slimmer. But I would like to get away from the brood because we are not quite ready to deal with that and the avian thrall at the same time. So I'm going to move away from the brood to the Waitley Ruins. Now that cost me two resources. I'll take my chances. If I get both, I get both. I've got lots of health. <clears throat> I've got a better chance at it than Daisy does. So that's it for skids. That's it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase. The avian thrall in Cold Spring Glen is going to move in to the 10 acre meadow and engage skids. He will then attack skids for one and one. So I will go ahead and take one on Dr. Francis Morgan, and I will take one horror on myself. If I can get two more horror on myself, I'll start to get these Say Your Prayers online. I haven't drawn one yet, but it'd be nice to have them online. All right, and that is the enemy phase until we get to the broods movement. And then we're going to move the broods. So the brood is going to randomly move toward... Number two, the Blasted Heath, okay? So the Brood is gonna move up here to the Blasted Heath. Okay, that doesn't get in anybody's face right now. And allows me to get into his face if I feel like it, and I might just feel like it. Makes it a little far from Skids. But I have a potential situation I could do to set him up for Daisy to take a couple swings at him. Yeah, in fact, Daisy could, she just can't end her turn at the blasted heath without some soak. So that might be a situation for Mr. Rook. All right, either way, that is the end of that round. We're gonna reset. I'm gonna get Dr. Francis Morgan back and we're gonna draw with skids 
a watch this. Okay, good way to get some cash without spending an action. And I'll take a third resource. And then Daisy will reset, draw a card, and uh, the other archaic glyphs, Guiding Stones. All right, this is the one that lets me discover additional clues. I'm fine with that right now. I'll probably just commit that, and I'll take a resource. All right. Doom on the agenda. By the way, this is Agenda 2A, biding its time. Once in a while, a wind sweeping up out of Cold Spring Glen would bring a touch of ineffable fetter to the heavy night air. But the looked-for terror did not appear. Whatever was down there in the glen was biding its time, and Armitage told its colleagues it would be suicidal to try to attack it in the dark. All right, so that's one of six, and we're going to go ahead and draw a couple encounter cards. Skids. Draws, need for knowledge. Okay, so this is, I do have clues. So this is going to uh, make me test, uh, let's see, intellect two. Uh, I'll just take this test uh, at three to two. That's a minus four, yuck. All right, so I have to either take a horror or put a clue back on my location. Um, I'll take the two horror. Let's go ahead and get set up for the say your prayers. I'll just take the two horror. I've still got a uh, elder sign amulet in my uh, hand if I need that. And then we've got uh, Daisy's card. Oh, goodness gracious. Another idle hands. Okay. Well, that might be a job for... Uh, that might be a job for Mr. Rook because I don't really have any way to survive to the two damage that that would do to me other than Mr. Rook. So that seems like a pretty good plan, actually. So the let me think about this brood. This brood, if uh, he has only two locations he can move to, if we draw Dunwich Village or Ten Acre Meadow or Cold Spring Glen, he's going to move to to Dunwich Village. And if we draw the other ones, he'll move the other way. So it's a fifty fifty shot, truly a fifty fifty shot, as to where he's going to move from Blasted Heath. Well, uh, less than 50-50 to go to Devil's Hopyard because that he might just stay at the Blasted Heath. But I have an opportunity here to get some clues on him to make him easier to hit. But I have to deal with the idle hands situation right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Daisy will go first, and I will spend three resources to play a Mr. Rook leaving Daisy with three resources. And that will put three secrets on Mr. Rook. Um, let's see, uh, what are my weaknesses I still have left? I have drawn the Necronomicon, so my other two are just basic weaknesses. I will take a Mr. Rook action and just Draw three cards. One, two, three. Okay, so I got a deduction, a Daisy's tote bag, and a Divermus Mysterious. Okay, so the Divermus Mysterious, let's see what that might be able to do for me. Speller Insight. Uh, nothing in the discard pile right now that I'm really wanting to copy. Uh, the tote bag commits for two willpower icons, so I'll just keep that. And we'll shuffle the other the other two back in. I hate to waste all the, the uh, horror soak that I can get out of Mr. Rook, but I think I just need to go ahead and uh, soak up the idle hands 
because there's just no other way around that. Yep. So I will go ahead and use idle hands to take to kill Mr. Rook. Thanks, buddy. We're going through our allies like they're made of cheese here. Um, but I do get an extra action this turn. So Daisy still has three remaining actions. And what will they be? Uh, I have two clues, which is pretty good. I can move in and attack. Um, I could also move in and evade the brood with the last charge on the archaic glyphs. I honestly think that's probably a pretty good play because then Skids could escape the avian thrall, get up there and drop the powder of Ibn Ghazi. So Daisy moves in, evade him and move back. Sure, I like that plan. So let's go ahead and move in with Daisy. I'm gonna move in to the Blasted Heath. Oh, interesting. If I was gonna do that, I probably should have just taken that horror on Mr. Rook. Yeah, I'll retcon that just a little bit. So Mr. Rook is still in play with two damage on him, or two, with, uh, with no damage on him, two secrets. I have spent one action to play him. So then my second action, I will move in to the Blasted Heath and I will test the Willpower 3 to try to avoid the horror from the Brood of yog Sophoth. So this is a three to three test. I will not commit anything. And I draw minus one, so that's not good enough. So I'll put the horror on Mr. Rook and then I will go ahead and do the idle hands and take out Mr. Rook. So just a, try not to waste that soak. I've got two actions remaining. I will spend my second action to use the third charge off of the archaic glyphs. And I will investigate. I know there are no clues here, but that doesn't matter. I can still investigate it. And I'm investigating at five to three. And I also will not commit anything to that. And we draw a minus two. Excellent. Ooh, I dropped it back in the bag. Shoot, I forgot to show the camera. Well, you all know what a minus two looks like. There it is right there. So, got a minus two. So I get the clue, but there isn't a clue, and I do evade the Brood of Yog sothoth And for my third action, I will move back to the Devil's Hopyard. and maybe set a trap there, we'll see. All right, Skids is going to just duck out of the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of punt for a turn here. I'm gonna duck out of the way of the avian thrall, or at least try, and I will commit a watch this with all three of my resources, and I will also commit a narrow escape. So I'm evading this guy at seven, two, three. And I won't forget to show the token this time. Seven to three and the evade comes up a minus one. All right, so that's successful. So I double my money to six resources. Excellent, I needed that cash right now. And I evade the avian thrall here in the 10 acre meadow. All right, and then I will move to the Dunwich Village, and then I will move again to the uh, Blasted Heath, and then I will go ahead and dump all three of my uh, clues from the Powder of Ibn Ghazi onto this brood. So one, two, three clues. So now we are at a plus six to attack it. It has a seven attack, but that's gonna give us, give Daisy, and also me, a little bit of a, a boon to be able to attack him. A lot of a boon to be able to attack him. We're a little bit all in here on this guy, but honestly, with everybody, uh, especially Daisy's health situation looking so bad, um, I need to punt and get out of here. So that takes care of that. Uh, Skids could spend two actions to take another, two uh, resources to take another action. Oh, honestly, I might, because I have the opportunity to potentially do some damage here. So let's see, Skids attacking this guy would be at 
two plus six. So he would be at eight to seven attacking this guy. But at the expenditure of no resources, and he does not have retaliate. And yeah, there's really no downside to that. It's sort of just a free shot, but it cost me two bucks. I'm in, let's do it. I'll spend two bucks and take a pot shot at the Brood of Yog sothoth So this is an, uh, an eight to seven. Oh, I forgot to test. So when I went into his location, I had to test a willpower three to avoid a horror. That's unlikely to happen, but I'll test it. And I test out a minus three, so that's definitely not successful. So skids will take a horror. That's starting to be a bit of an issue here. And then my pot shot against the brood at, uh, let's see, I am at uh, eight to seven. And the token out of the bag is a zero. Very nice. Okay, so that's one damage onto the brood from skids. Hey, look at that. Skids actually hitting broods for damage. That's Who'd have thought that had been the case? And that is the end of the investigation phase. We are moving on to the enemy phase. Uh, nothing happens. At the end of the enemy phase, that brood will move. So let's see where he goes. And the Die of Destiny says we are going to the Ten Acre Meadow. Okay. So the quickest path to the Ten Acre Meadow takes the brood through Dunwich Village, which is a shame. Uh, because that puts it even farther from Daisy efficiently getting over to it. And puts that avian thrall back in play. All right, so everything resets. Avian thrall resets. And skids resets and draws a lone wolf. Okay, that will help me in... Help me evade, I don't think I'll need the cash for that right now. Take a resource, putting me at five. And then Daisy will reset. Draws the good Necronomicon. Okay, that's pretty good. A little late for that right now, but it would let me start getting my tome action back in play. And I'll take a resource, putting me at four. Eh, that's not too late for that at all, actually. Oh, Skids takes a damage at the end of the round for hanging out over at the Blasted Heath. So that's, Skids gets two out of eight damage. No worries there. I'm definitely going to want to get that Elder Sign Amulet in play uh, to keep Skids from going crazy. And I also have the cash to afford the 45 automatic now. Alrighty, that's it for the round. All right, Mythos Phase. Doom on the agenda, number two of six. Skid's encounter card is Attracting Attention. Oh, how interesting. Okay. Uh, each Brood of Yog sothoth enemy in play moves once toward you. Uh-oh. Hmm, boy, that's bad. It does not attack. It just moves once towards me. Okay, well, actually, that's not so bad. So he's coming back to me. Honestly, that's pretty good. That's gonna set me up for some potential further attacking. It gets Daisy closer to attack. Okay, well, I don't wanna start rejoicing too heavily here. Now, he entered my location, so I have to test for uh, horror. So here, so uh, this, this is Skids testing at four to three. Two, sorry, two to three. And we're looking at a minus two. Okay, so Skids takes another horror. That is five out of six horror on Skids. So no matter what else I do this round, I am definitely going to need to play that Elder Sign Amulet before I go Kukuladuku. And we are going to draw the Surge card off of that. Sorted and Silent. Attach this to our location. At the end of the round, each investigator here takes a horror. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, well, this location gives you both damage and horror at the end of the round. What a lovely place to be. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and hit with Daisy. Her oh. encounter card is a Whippoorwill. Oh God, I forgot these guys were in the scenario. All right. So the Whippoorwill is hanging out over here with Daisy in the Devil's Hop Yard. I don't think that's gonna come into play for me at uh, this round. I don't think it's gonna matter. It might matter next round, but we've got to kill this brood this round, no doubt about it. We're the thrall, we have one round uh, to stall before the avian thrall gets to us. So this is the round to go ahead and go, uh, go bananas on this guy. All right, let's see here. Before I decide what to do with skids, let's go ahead and send Daisy in there and see if she can hit him a couple times. There's definitely no reason she should be doing anything else. Uh, I will, let's see, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna attack twice. I'm gonna take damage and horror by being there at the end of the round. But Daisy can, she can take one more damage before that's the end of things. Is there anything else I wanna do? Uh, nope, I'm just gonna risk it. So let's go ahead and move in. Daisy will move into the uh, Blasted Heath for her first action. She will cast Esoteric Formula for her second action. Now this is a three, I'm a nine to seven on this attack and I will definitely commit something. I will commit my old book of lore, not something Daisy often commits, uh, to go 10 to seven on the attack. And we get a minus three. How about that? Whew. Close, very close. That is a second damage on the Brood of Yog Sothoth. All right, Daisy will take another action to attack. And this is three to plus six is nine to seven. And I will commit and my other archaic glyphs to go 10 to seven. And we pull a cultist. All right, that means take another token. And the other token is a elder thing. Okay, so that is a successful attack. It is revealed. Oh, so it immediately attacks me. Oh boy, that's terrible. Ooh, that's gonna be it for Daisy, I do believe. She got the damage in, but not, not without penalty. Okay, so the brood will attack Daisy back because of the elder thing, and it hits for a damage and two horror. So Daisy can, Daisy can survive the damage, putting her at four out of five. She can survive the horror, putting her at eight out of nine. Unfortunately, she has ended her turn at the Blasted Heath, which means she takes another damage. And then at the end of the round, she would take another horror from Sorted and Silent. I don't have any soak out there. So ending my turn at the Blasted Heath kills Daisy. And unfortunately, as much as I would love to take that as a mental trauma, I have to take that as a physical trauma. But she did get the hit in on the brood, so that's three damage to the brood. Oh, that, that elder thing is an unfortunate pull. Ah, you know, you always regret putting that thing in the bag. I don't think the Necronomicon was worth it. So, uh, Daisy will uh, take a physical trauma and she is out of the scenario. All right, so that leaves things up to skids. Uh, Daisy's clues are dropped on the location. Not that that matters too terribly much. And she is done. Okay, now it's skids versus broods. 
<laughs> Not a phrase you want to ever hear or say. So Skids is going to spend his first action to attack the brood. Now, this is going to take some luck here because I don't have anything to commit except for the Elder Sign Amulet. And I don't really have a safe place to run to. Horror-wise. I do have Francis Morgan can soak up one horror for me. Yeah. <clears throat> That's true. All right, I need to make sure I kill this thing. I'm going to commit the Elder Sign Amulet and with my intention of just resigning as soon as possible. So I'm attacking the Brood. I have a willpower of two, plus the two from the Elder Sign Amulet is four, plus the six from the clues on the Brood is ten to seven. That makes the bag very favorable, but let's see what happens. Ten to seven and Skids pulls... Occultist, oh my god. Here we go, another pull out of the bag. 10 to seven. And we pull a plus one. All right, so that is successful. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so Skids has killed this brood for his first action. All right, Towering Beasts is a horrible card. Just a horrible card. But that is my second brood defeated, which was what I was shooting for coming into the scenario. Would have preferred to have done that without taking any trauma with Daisy, for sure. And I think... I think I just move and resign. So my thought here is, what are my chances of being able to take out another brood? I, I think essentially zero. Um, Skids is not the one who's got the willpower, although really Daisy didn't either. Um, but we've used up all my clues from Powder of Benghazi. I would have, I've got a Whippoorwill chasing us around now and an avian thrall. Yep, it's time to get out of here. So Skids is going to move then for his second action over to the Dunwich Village. Oh, by the way, I am not drawing a card off of Dr. Francis Morgan for killing the uh, killing the uh, the brood because I don't want to draw hospital debts and end up losing XP, which is going to be slim to none to begin with. So we're moving into the uh, Dunwich Village, and then I'm going to resign for my third action, and that's it, and we're done. Okay, you know, all things considered, that's about how I expected this to go. Uh, I did not want to have anybody take any trauma, but Daisy had that rough beginning of the scenario. Even with her soak to be able to avoid the damage, I just couldn't stay healthy enough. Um, I think that uh, I think that that was just a little bit of unluck. I had to deal with that um, uh, that stupid punch yourself in the face card. I can't think what it's called. Uh, idle hands. I had to deal with that twice with Daisy, um, and that's just that's just tough with only five health, uh, and it was taking away her sanity after the Necronomicon had already done its job on her. So, I, it was just kind of a combination of uh, bad things happening. Skids was also one sanity away from uh, death as well. I think we're pretty going to be pretty pleased to have taken out two broods. So. Uh, we have uh, both resigned. Well, one of us has resigned and one of us has been killed. So let's look and see what the resolution says. If no resolution was reached, each investigator resigned or was defeated, go to resolution one. You did all you could to try to stop the rampaging monsters, but there were more of them than you realized and you weren't able to slay them all. Exhausted and terrified, you retreat to Zebulon's home and hope to survive the night. In your campaign log, record that X broods escaped into the wild. X is the total number of broods still in play or set aside. So that would be two escaped into the wild. We remove the powder of Ibn Ghazi from Skid's deck. And we gain experience equal to the victory X value of the cards in the victory display. Okay, there are no victory uh, points available on the board. Uh, no locations give VP. So essentially all we've got is the two broods that we killed, with our, which are both worth a point apiece. 
giving us a uh, total loot of the, from this scenario of two XP. I don't think there are any VP enemies in the deck. The other, th the Lupine Thralls are not worth points. Uh, let's see. Um, nope, that's it. So the max points out of that one is four uh, in my situation. So I got two out of the four. It's all right. Daisy will take one physical trauma and then we will try to figure out what to do with our two XP as we head into the climb up Sentinel Hill, which is called Where Doom Awaits. Thanks for listening and watching. You've been watching, I've got a plan. I'm Tim Fiscus, you can reach me anytime uh, on my channel and Facebook at I've Got A Plan Podcast, on SoundCloud at Tim Paul, P-A-U-L, I've Got A Plan. You can also find the links to my SoundCloud and Facebook below. Uh, you can find me around the place as Huckman T on Facebook's Arkham Horror The Card Game page and on Reddit's Arkham Horror The Card Game page uh, or on the uh, Discord for Mythos Busters or Drawn to the Flame uh, as Huckman T, H-U-C-K-M-A-N-T. Hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Uh, let's hope Skids and Daisy can continue uh, their success through the return to Dunwich Legacy at the next penultimate scenario of the campaign, Where Doom Awaits. Let's have fun. <laughs> <laughs>